screencast on how to integrate Tailwind CSS into an Ember app. Um, and uh, I was inspired to pick this one because some folks were using it today as an example of a thing that they thought was very hard to integrate. Um, they thought it would require a lot of deep black magic or some kind of deep foo, broccoli foo inside of Ember CLI. And um, that's really not the case. And um, I've never used Tailwind before, but I'm going to pick it up here and we're going to figure out together how to integrate it. Um, I, uh, I mean, I did look through the docs already so that I know I can do the screencast and it won't take forever. It's going to be a pretty quick thing. Um, the overall takeaway is that the amount of config you need to integrate Tailwind into an Ember app is actually very comparable to the amount of config you'd need to integrate into almost any framework. Um, I mean, in Ember, it perhaps feels a little bad because our standards are actually quite high for how add-ons should integrate. And it's like, if it takes more than one line, um, it's like a kind of bad experience, um, relatively speaking. Uh, but it turns out it's actually just very, very comparable. So let's take a look at it together. So Tailwind is a framework for helping you write your CSS. Um, and why the, it matters to us mostly that it is a CSS preprocessor, right? So it's a thing that's going to have to manipulate our CSS to, as part of our build process. So let's dive into Tailwind Stocks and look at how to install it. And uh, it's, you know, we can get it off of a CDN with a script tag, but of course, like serious apps want to integrate into their build system. Let's skip directly to that part. You know, most projects, and to take advantage of the customization, you'll want to install from NPM. So let's install it to an app. So let's make an Ember app. Uh, I'm going to just do completely from scratch, Ember new Tailwind test, and I'm going to Leave it dash dash yarn because I want to use a yarn install on that first build. Um, we'll let that run while I look at the next steps. So the next step we're going to do is adding Tailwind CSS to our app. Um, after that, we're going to make a Tailwind config file, and it gives us a command for actually generating it. We just have to pick a path to put the file in, and it's going to generate it for us. All right, let's see. Uh, let's watch our app, new app, get created and fully installed. I think my screencast slows down the build times quite a bit, but we'll see. I was hoping to do this with no editing, but I really don't want people to sit and watch Yarn install. All right, let's see. Here's our app. It's a normal Ember app. We could, uh, we could of course, start it up, but I think folks who've worked, worked on Ember apps have seen what that looks like. Let's just go directly to our next step. Uh, which is we're going to add to in CSS. There it goes installing that. And um, after that, we're going to do their init step. While the install is running, yeah, it looks like almost done actually. Yeah, okay. We can do it in order. So now we've got Tailwind. And of course, we just added an NPM dependency. So it hasn't done anything for us really yet. If we look at what's going on um, in our app right now, Right. I have my I have my initial commit that Ember CLI put there, and then I have the changes we just added, which is just adding Tailwind. Okay. Um, so let's use the command here to make a config file, and we have to give it a file name. So, you know, by convention we have already have a config directory in an Ember app, so I'm thinking that's a good place to put our Tailwind config. Uh, so I'm going to call it config tailwind.js. Okay. And that ran. And just if you haven't seen this way of calling an NPM program before, like node modules dot bin tailwind, um, that's basically if there's ever a command line program that came as the dependencies of your app, you can always find it there. It, it might not be globally installed on your machine, but you can always find it this way. Um, so that's probably why they wrote their docs this way. Um, okay, so now we should have that file. Um, let's take a look. And yeah, there it is. And so I can open it up and uh, see I've got all this info and all default config and all the things that Taylor gives us. So that all looks fine. Um, now, the next step says to use Tailwind in your CSS. And it shows us some things that we should put into our CSS. Um, there's actually several different sections that you put in um, so that you can interleave your own stuff in between them in the right order. But it's mostly these three lines that matter, Tailwind, Preflight, Components, and utilities, right? So if we wanted just a completely empty startup, we could do that. So let's go to app styles, app CSS, which was already in our app, it just has nothing in it yet. And we'll do Tailwind Free Flight, Tailwind Components, and Tailwind Utilities. I mean, I could, I guess, grab this whole thing with all the comments, but I don't really want that right now. Um, so 
this sets me up with all the Tailwind stuff in my app. And actually, just to you to try it out, um, let's do like let's actually use one of these styles in our app. Well, uh, we'll get to that once we have it working, because I don't actually know what I don't actually know Tailwind, and I couldn't come up with one off the top of my head. Um, let's go to step four. So uh, pre-process you process your CSS with Tailwind. So there's a CLI tool that can take a CSS file and pre-process it. Um, but over here it says, for most projects, you'll want to add Tailwind as a post CSS plugin to your build chain. Okay, so that's our major clue here of how to do it. And it does give specific examples of how that looks in a couple different things like Gulp, Webpack, Laravel, um, probably whoever got bothered to make PRs to this page to put in examples. Um, but it, it's very, um, it's very illustrative, right? A lot of them, they look very much similar. You're going to import Tailwind CSS, and you're going to pass it as the plugin that's going into your, your post CSS. Uh, so if I didn't know how to do post CSS in an Ember app, the first place I would go is to, here to Ember Observer and say post CSS. Oop, I just typed it up in the URL bar instead of there, but it actually worked the same. Um, OK, this here, here's a level 8 rated add-on, meaning it's like pretty well trusted and used by the community and well supported uh, for post CSS. Um, so let's go to their page. Ember CLI post CSS explains why you might want to use it, how to get started. So we're going to add Ember CLI post CSS package. Um, they've written Ember install um, that runs. You can run Ember install. You can run Yarn install. The only subtlety is that um, Ember install will run any generators for you. I don't think I care about that right now. So let's just say Yarn install dev Ember CLI post CSS. And um, and it shows me here how I configure it in my Ember CLI build file. Right? So this snippet here is actually the, the secret ingredient that was missing from, the web, from these docs. Right? And you can actually see it's like very much the same shape. Here's how you would do it in Webpack. Here's how you would do it with, with Ember CLI post CSS. Uh, so let's make, sure, make, let's make that happen. Um, this is, of course, a generic one that's showing a couple other post CSS plugins, like post CSS import, CSS next. Um, in a practical app, you might want these plugins. Um, in addition to Tailwind, but let's um, let's just do this. So let's go to Ember CLI build, and here's add options here. Let's put the options there where it tells us to. Post CSS options, compile plugins. All right. So these are this is these are not the plugins I want to use. I want to use um, Tailwind CSS, right? And that's how they show it. They require Tailwind CSS. Um, now, so. There we go. I have configured uh, Tailwind CSS. And I'm going to, um, now we're going to build it and see if it works. And uh, we're going to work through together making it work, because I know this will not work right out of the box. And we're going to debug the, the little bit of feedback we get together. So if I uh, try to start Ember. My build times are really slow when I'm screen screen recording. It's usually a lot faster than that. It's my CPU being pegged, apparently. OK. Um, oh, it actually built. That surprised me. OK. Why did that work? I wasn't expecting it to. Oh, because I don't have, I don't really have Ember CLI post CSS. Yarn install dev Ember CLI post CSS. It's supposed to be there, but it's not there. What happened to my install fail? That is very weird. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe Yarn messed up because this doesn't say Ember CLI post CSS, and um, that's very weird. The uh, I mean, so as a learning point here, right? I'm looking at my package.json to see what's changed, and I should clearly see my new package here, and I don't. And even if it's in my node modules, uh, Ember CLI post CSS, no, it's not. OK, so it's clearly something weird happened there. Oh, you know why? Because I'm silly, and I said yarn install instead of yarn add. Yarn add dev Ember CLI post CSS. And um, I'm surprised it didn't yell at me, actually, because usually yarn is smart about that. If you just say, yeah. Anyway, yarn install is when you just install everything your app needs. Yarn add is for adding new things. My bad. So now we actually have it. Now I can see that it's there. And 
yeah, it's in the right section and all that. Okay. So now let's try our build. And here's where I'm expecting to hit one bug that I happen to know because I did try this before I started recording. Um, I'm leaving the bugs in warts and all so that we can look together at how we, we get through them. So here we go. Build error, post CSS compiler. Path must be a string received from two map parser browsers. Okay, so like, and if we, um, and EverCLI gives us a much more detailed report on the error here. So if I grab this file, um, just grab that file name. Let's just like open it up in my editor. So like this is a full report that you could easily like share on GitHub as a bug report. So it has everything about what your app has in it and you know all, everything that was going on at the time. But it also has a full stack trace of what happened. And th the error that we got, um, is coming out of a stack trace directly out of Tailwind. So like Tailwind wasn't happy with what we gave it as inputs. And so um, let's go see what Tailwind expects for inputs. So in this example, uh, they're actually calling Tailwind CSS with the path to the config file. Uh, so it looks like the Tailwind CSS that we import takes the path to our config file as an argument. Okay, so we can do that. Uh, let's try that as the next step. So here's where I was just doing module require tailwind CSS. Um, now I could do it like they showed. I can just like try to do, let's move it up here. Const tailwind CSS equals that. Tailwind CSS, right? And I could pass it the path to my tailwind config file, which we made earlier. It is there. Uh, so let's do that. And We'll see what we get this time. I think we'll get a slightly different kind of error. And it's going to help us zoom in on what's going on here. OK, plugin.module is not a function. And we have a stack trace again. And if we go look at that stack trace and we think about it, what we're going to see is that this thing, this module thing, is supposed to be a function. right? It, so these post CSS options really are expecting us just to put the module here, not the module that has already been called with arguments. And if we go look at the Ember CLI, the post CSS docs, um, it actually has, let's go to the full docs for this library. Oh, it's actually very nice. Um, last time I just looked at the readme and I didn't realize all this is here. It's very nice. Uh, so here's plugins. And you see, actually, it expects the module and the options. So that's just the, the calling format for how this thing goes. Um, oh, and you can actually also do, yeah, function form. There are two supported methods for defining functions plugins, which can be a list of modules and options, or just this. Oh, so maybe we can just use this format. That looks good. Let's try that. I don't actually know if this is going to work, because I didn't even read those docs the last time I fought through this bug. Um, I, know what the, I know what the answer is. Uh, basically, it's the Tailwind is expecting weirder options than, uh, or at least what, what the post-CSS uh, plug compiler here thinks is weird options. It's expecting a POJO of options. Uh, but Tailwind's expecting a string of options, and they're just not happy with each other. But this might actually just do it, because here we get to control all the options ourselves. Oh, there, yeah, there we go. Okay, good. So we did it. It built, but does it work? So um, here's our Ember app. Let's try to use Tailwind in our Ember app. So um, let's, well, actually, let's look at just to see. The, the code we already put into our CSS file, this is supposed to generate a bunch of like boilerplate uh, stuff. Let's go see if our build has it. Um, let's see. Sources, assets, Tailwind test JS. Nope, I want the CSS. Tailwind test CSS. Okay, oh, there we go. I have a lot of stuff in there that was not from me. Uh, is this Tailwind? It probably is. Uh, yeah, th th here's the stuff. That, this is stuff. Out of, this is the kind of stuff Tailwind gives you. So, like, if I wanted BG Blue Lightest, uh, yeah, let's let's go with yeah, let's uh, BG Pink. Nice. All right, let's take a BG Pink class and go to our app templates application HVS. All right, here's that welcome page we were rendering. Let's instead just put like H1 class equals. Oops, what was it? BG Pink. And hello, Tailwind. All right. There's the app rebuilding itself, and it's pink. All right, so we succeeded. Uh, Tailwind is fully integrated with our app. 
um, you should be good from here on out. So how much do we have to do? So we uh, have this generated Tailwind config file. We haven't touched it yet. It's just boilerplate. We have um, we followed the instructions to put the basic framework of Tailwind in our app. We have um, let's stage that. We have our template that just demonstrates that it works. And here's our Ember CLI build. This is as much configuration as we needed, right? Which compares very favorably with the amount of config you need to do it and to do it in Webpack, to do it in Gulp, etc. Um, and keep in mind, even in those other frameworks, you would have had to add PostGIS as support yourself because that's how they work, right? Like, we are, it's not that different. Um, here's our package JSON. Here's the packages we added: PostCSS and Tailwind CSS, and a yarn lock. So that's it. That's my whole commit. Add Tailwind, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna share this code. I don't know if it deserves to be a whole repo. Maybe a gist would be good for anybody who wants to. Um, and I'm gonna post a link on uh, the discuss forums. So thanks for listening.